Hi, welcome to the first video for unit three here in uh, uh, AP Physics C Mechanics. So here we're going to talk about the, the basics behind work and kinetic energy. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll tie them together using the work energy theorem. So the first thing is that work is done when force acts on something that undergoes a displacement from one position to another. That's your basic uh, definition, right? So what we do is one thing to note is that so especially when there's angles involved, um, one thing to understand is that work is done in the direction of, uh, is only done in the direction of the motion. I probably should put that as a note. Um, okay, so what's happening is even though the, the dad and the son are here pushing down at an angle, um, the only work that's being done is in the horizontal direction um, in terms of the force, because um, that's the direction of the motion, right? So the, the lawnmower will move horizontally. Now, last year when we uh, when you talked about it in physics one, you probably you were talking about constant forces. So the the way that we calculated that was work is equal to. Now we're going to use a little bit of kind of a little bit of calculus here. So this is a dot product. This is not multiply, but it's a dot product. And a dot product is also known as a scalar product, which is when you get uh, when you multiply two vectors and you get a scalar quantity in return. Um, a way to think about it is that one is a projection on the other. So if I had, if I'm doing like f dot dx, okay, uh, let me make one a little bit shorter than the other. And we'll do a different color. All right, and so here's one vector. Here's another vector. And the way that you think about a dot product is if I had a flashlight shining up above this whole thing, right? What would be the projection or the length of the shadow of one on the other? This is my dot product, okay? So what we do is we take the magnitude of the force multiplied by the magnitude of delta x or dx, and we multiply it by the cosine of the angle, okay? So one thing to note is that if your angle was perpendicular, right, there is no work. So if you're pushing horizontally and your force is vertical, there's no work being done by that force. All right. That was last year. Um, and so a lot of times you, it was just written like this, work equals F delta X. Now you have what happens when there's a variable force, right? And so with respect to position, because all this done is done over a distance. So to find the work done, we're going to take the integral from the initial position to the final position of f dot dx, okay? And that'll give us the, um, the amount of work done by this variable force. So a lot of times they'll look at nonlinear springs. So a nonlinear spring is one, one in which that does not behave or use Hooke's law as its basis. And then finally, kinetic energy. Um, remember, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and there's no difference here than what you did, what we did last year. What you did last year in a physics one course, k equals one half mv squared. Okay, and like the reason why we have Slinky Dog here is because in our example problem, we're going to look at the scene where he gets stretched uh, a good distance, uh, and we're actually going to do two example problems: one focused centered around work, the other centered around kinetic energy. All right, so here's the here's the um, the work uh, form or the excuse me the work example problem. So in the chase scene from Disney movie from the Disney movie Toy Story, Slinky Dog is stretched a considerable distance. If the work required to stretch him from zero meters to one meters is two joules, what is the force constant? Or remember, force constant is simply the spring constant for the Slinky Dog. And then how much work is required to stretch the Slinky Dog from one meter to two meters? Okay, so. The first thing we need to do is find K, right? Because that's our spring constant. So we would do work equals the integral from X initial to, to X of F dot DX. Well, if 
for springs, it's kx. So that's what I'm going to find. So I'm going to find the integral of kx dx from x0 to x. All right. When I take the integral of that, I get 1 half kx squared. And I'm going to evaluate that from, in this case, from 0 to 1. But I know what it's equal to because I'm solving for k. So I'm going to say 2 equals 1 half k times, oh, that shouldn't be a sub 2, that should be a squared. 1 squared minus 1 half k times 0 squared. Well, that goes away. And so you have 2 equals 1 half k, or k equals 4 newtons per meter. So that's so there is our force constant. Now we need that because now we got to plug that into our equation to find the amount of work and done stretching him from one meter to two meters. And something you'll find is that it's going to take more work to do this. Okay. And so when I now I do my integral, I got four times one half kx squared. Uh, we're going to evaluate that from one to two. So work equals two x squared. Again, evaluated from 1 to 2, so it's going to be 2 times 2 squared minus 2 times 1 squared. Well, 2 times 2 squared is 8 minus 2. So it's going to take 6 joules of work to stretch him another meter past what we already have. Okay, now let's look at an example problem for kinetic energy. So, A, what is the kinetic energy of an athlete, of an 80 kilogram athlete running 10 meters per second? And then in thermal or nuclear reactors, thermal neutrons travel about 2.2 uh, 2 .2 kilometers per second, play an important role. What is the kinetic energy of such a particle? Well, the mass of a neutron is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. And so the speed for that one would be 2.2 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. All right, so let's do part A, the 80 kilogram athlete. So you have one half mv squared. K is one half times 80 times v squared, which is 10. So they will have a kinetic energy of 4,000. So again, no different than what you would have done or what was done in a physics one course. Now we have K equals one half mv squared. Now we look at the neutron. So one half times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th times 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 3 squared. And that's going to give us a, i to find my calculator. Ah, here's one. So uh, we got 0.5 times 1.67 exponent negative uh, 27, not negative 3, times 2.2 .2 exponent 3 squared. And we get Kinetic energy for the neutron of 4.04 .04 times 10 to the negative 21st joules. Okay, so note the unit for work and energy is joules. All right, so J U L E S for James Prescott joule. Um, and they're going to have the same unit because another way to think about work and energy is that one is, work is a transfer of energy, and energy is the ability to do work. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at how can we tie these two together through a special theorem.